This is Robin Nelson with Wrestle Popcast presents Beyond the Bell. And my guest tonight is the future great wrestling heavyweight champion, Mitch Magnus. All right. So, Mitch, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up at, and how'd you get into the wrestling business? Grew up right here, Hamilton, Fairfield area, you know, bouncing back and forth. Uh, started out just like everybody else, being a fan, attending shows, uh, attended the company that's close to Cincinnati at the time, Heartland Wrestling. Went there, signed in, uh, joined the train, and trained by Cody Hawk, and took it off. So what was it like to be trained by Cody Hawk, the trainer of champions? Very tough, very, very tough. Uh, a lot of drills, a lot of psychology. He goes, his mind is, <laughs> it's expanded, let's just, let's say that. So when you're not in the ring, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, you know, i a uh, huge football fan, Detroit Lions, yeah, I know. But um, football, you know, and pretty much wrestling, I mean, that's, that's my life. Study wrestling, watch it, different things, you know, different people. Got to stay up on the times, on the That's game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your most memorable moment of your career? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. There's been a lot of things. Uh, wrestling, former WWF guys, WWE guys. Um, I don't know. Just, just uh, feeling like now it's been many years, but uh, I feel comfortable. feel like I'm, you know, on a roll. Obviously the FGW champion, so... All right, let's um, let's talk about uh, tonight your match with uh, Darkness Worldwide. Yeah, uh, Darkness Worldwide, Amos, Eric Fallen, even even uh, Harley Fairfax. Here's the thing: uh, when you get in there, you're not getting in for technical wrestling or a fight or anything else. You're scrapping. They go for the eyes. They try and break arms. They they cheat any way they can. I believe Eric Fallen just last week uh, hit me right over the head with the belt, then plants me on the belt. So. My hands are full with Darkness Worldwide, but trust me, when it's all said and done, they'll see the light, and I'll still be champion. All right. So also, another question about Darkness Worldwide as well. Um, did they get into your head? Um, getting into my head, if I'm going to be honest, it's starting. It's starting, you know. Um, last week, first title defense, you know, Eric Fallen. Uh, I've known Eric Fallen for a while. We've had a few battles. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into, but I will say it's a lot different now. Barnabas Specter has got them guys on a totally different level right now. Like I say, they don't play by any rules, eyes, breaking arms, cheating any way they can. So getting in my head, um, you know, I, I got to, I guess, keep an open mind. But if I'm being honest, yeah, it, it's starting to bother me a little bit. Since you're a champ now, where do you go from here with future great wrestling? Uh, well, uh, hopefully this belt right here stays with me for a long time and probably till I hang up the boots, let's say. So I don't know if there's another champion, but I, I ain't giving this up for a long, long time. All right. Uh, thank you for coming on. And everybody, this is Robin Nelson. Good night.
It's the main event of Shockwave, and we're going to have to talk about that disgusting, vile incident that took place last week here in the FGW Arena, where the Prophet of Pain, Amos, hit William Wolf right in the face with a baseball bat. Yeah, we've mentioned it tonight. If you heard Hooks mention it, it was a disgusting act. It was too much, and it makes me uncomfortable to even... I don't want to talk about it. It was... Darkness Worldwide. I've been a fan throughout their time at FGW, but that, that was crossing the line. Of course, this is a non-title matchup. Mitch Magnus uh, defending the title against the paranormal Eric Fallen, also of Darkness Worldwide. He uh, won that match via disqualification, and before that, he was able to take that championship from former champion Drew Skills. And before that match with Drew Skills, Mitch Magnus made his, he earned a shot one time after another at the number one contendership. I don't know how many times, it had to be at least half a dozen times. And finally, he got the job done against Drew Skills. Mitch Magnus, in my estimation, he still has something to prove. He still has to prove that he is a champion's champion. That he would go down in the annals of FGW history as a worthy, great champion inside that squared circle. I don't think he is quite in a place where he can lay claim to that, but I gotta say though, what he's doing to Amos right now, that's a, that's a good way on the road to laying claim to what I was just talking about. Amos though, the counter, throwing him into the post, not the post, excuse me, the top turnbuckle. And now the boot right underneath the chin of the champion. Mitch Magnus, the crowd definitely behind the FGW champion. And Amos has controlled the majority of the early moments of this matchup in our main event here on Shockwave. Mitch Magnus, he's earned this crowd's respect. And Amos, he's had a story pass with Bad Attitude Brian Beach. He's had some great matches, but these fans, along with myself, the two count there, these fans, along with myself, I think lost a lot of respect for Amos because of what he did to William Wolf, that vile act with that bat. Amos taking control, taking the champion to the mat, Joe Copez, checking Magnus, see if he wants to uh, throw in the towel. A little too early, I believe, for that. Amos is a man who has no respect for his opponents. He has only one thing in mind, and that's brutalizing his opponents. And last week, he showed how far he will go to eliminate competition by hitting William Wolf in the face with a baseball bat. Off the ropes, Amos. Nice! German suplex. Oh, a suplex, Mitch Magnus out of the ring. And Magnus is a heap. And he has just not been able to get out of the gates in this matchup. And the FGW champion, Mitch Magnus, is in trouble early. Oh, look at that inverted overdrive there from Amos. And now a cover. Certainly hope everybody's enjoying our, uh, our first venture here on Shockwave, future great wrestling from Hamilton, Ohio. We want to say hi to everybody out there on YouTube. We want you to be with us each and every week right here on Shockwave for more great wrestling action. But right now, Amos, the prophet of pain, solidly in control of the champion. Now he's dealing some pain right now, that's for sure. He's grabbing, I can't tell exactly what's going on. He's got the... That's some kind of clutch on Mitch Magnus. Try to catch him off guard there with that pin attempt. There we go. That chin lock there. That rear chin lock applied. Amos firm, firmly in control of this matchup from the outstart. Now he's got his man grounded. The champion trying to get to a vertical base. He does. Shots to the midsection. Body block, and that took Amos by surprise. Oh, 
clothesline. And now, I think Mitch Magnus is starting to wake up a little bit. I think he knows he's in there, and he knows he's in there with a man who wants to do him harm. You know what, both these guys, I think, Mitch Magnus, I already explained, I believe that's something to prove. But Amos, if Amos can get a non-title win over the FGW champion, I cannot think of a better way to put himself in line, to the front of the line, for the FGW number one contender spot, to be the next guy to challenge Mitch Magnus for that championship. Hard knife wedge chop by the champion. And, and if you notice, Amos has stuck to wrestling. Nothing but the baseball bats. There's no darkness worldwide at ringside. He's out there doing it on his own. And uh, I, as much as I hate to say it, I got to give him credit for that. Now, Amos impressive in this match thus far. Mitch Magnus draped over the middle rope. And then just when I give him credit, he goes back to the dirty tackle. Uh, no surprise, he uh, used every bit of that count. Another oh, second, it would have been a disqualification. And now Mitch Magnus thrown in front of Amos, who is stalking Magnus, the disrespectful smacks to the face. Oh, he may have woke the champion up. Oh, forearms. No for those forearms, Mooney. Oh, went for the discus forearm, didn't get it. Hey, here we go. Oh. I think both men took uh, I don't know who got the worst of that. On their head. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure who took the worst of that little malfunction at the junction there. And now. I think these fans would like for Mitch Magnus to make Amos tap. I could be wrong. That would be an uphill struggle, but if anybody can do it, it's our champion, Mitch Magnus. Oh, and again, you know, just when you think Amos is gonna stick to the wrestling, he goes back to the foul play, and now, oh, wait a minute, he's saying to Joe Copas, oh, now. He's grabbing him by the nostrils. And Joe Copas, warning, Amos, stay away from the ice. Well, Amos, he's never seen a rule he wouldn't bend. And sometimes he even breaks him. And if he can keep Seth off, he might break the arm of Mitch Magnus or choke him out in the process. Oh, a million dollar fish drop. Homage to the million dollar man. And Amos. Maybe not sure where to go next. Oh, wait, there he goes. Yeah, he's, he's got something right, that's for sure. Went for the sledgehammer. Oh, well done by the champion. Amos suplexed across the ring. Mitch Magnus catching him out of the air. And now both men are down. And Amos, you can see, Oh, that scrambled his eggs a bit. Magnus to his feet first. Amos, the proper to paint up. I've seen that one-legged drop kick before. Into the cover. Oh, hold on. That was close. Whoa. That was really close. Borderline questionable. Joe Copez, our senior official. The man you want in these high profile matches. And now Magnus, half Nelson. Oh, hold on a second. Is he going for the Fujiwara armbar? I think he might be trying to set him up that cross face that he took from Brian Beach. Oh my God, did you see that? Did you see Amos on his head, dropped on his head from Mitch Magnus? That's it. Oh. And I thought it was over. Amos able to dig down deep. I thought it was over. Yeah, I thought for sure that was it. Amos, you see him grabbing at his neck. That was a nasty, nasty move. Oh, now, now Magnus has the baseball. Oh, come on, Magnus. 
I'm not gonna say the son of a bitch doesn't deserve it. Wait a minute, Eric Fallen, another member of Darkness Worldwide. Oh, O'Connor roll. Hey, counter. Oh, reversal. Darkness Worldwide, certainly unhappy about that. Great counter to the O'Connor roll by the FGW champion, but he is gonna take a beating for getting that pinfall. Yeah, meanwhile, this post-match attack taking place. Oh, not the bad. Oh my God, not come on. Bad. Son, we need help. Amos, hey, don't do it. There's Ryan Wild. Ryan Wild has hit the ring, and he's gonna break this up. Thank God for Ryan Wild. I didn't think I'd ever hear those words come out of your mouth. But Wild has saved the FGW champion from certain disaster. Bad intentions on the mind of the Prophet of Pain, Amos, after that pinfall loss. Now, I think Magnus' head might have got, might have got home runs all the way up to the third row. And I still want to know what FGW officials are going to do about the Prophet of Pain, Amos, and Darkness hey, Worldwide. Hold on a second here. Yeah. Yeah. 42 little boys leave home. <laughs> you and you, I can't stand what you want. Tonight, Ryan Wild had my back. So what I'm thinking, Next week, me and Wild Wild say, come on, you and you, the Tarnish Worldwide. Rudy, what a match that would be. That would be a great tag team matchup for our next episode of Shockwave. From Mount Doom, Brian Well, with Steve lurking around, with Darkness Worldwide in the ring, David Barnabas Specter at ringside, one person that I would not want to be is this man, Ryan Wild. Of course, uh, some time ago, Ryan Wild defeated his older brother, Steve Anderson, in a casket match, and Steve has risen from that casket, and who knows what's going to happen in the main event tonight. Champion, the wrestling savant, Mitch Magnus. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the FGW champion. And he won that title from Drew Skills on September 27th after winning a fatal four-way match to become the number one contender. And finally, after his third try at the championship, he got the gold. Eric falling, Eric falling, staring daggers at Mitch Magnus. There's multiple scores to be settled here. As you said, Mooney, Ryan Wild defeating his brother in a casket match. Stevel emerging from that casket. I can't imagine who else Stevel would have his sights set on than Ryan Wild, his brother. One half of Roach. There's the bell and the match is underway and the profit of paying getting in Ryan Wild's face right off the get. Oh, and a chop to the chest. Wild and intimidating. An intimidating uh, look to him tonight. And say that again. Ryan Wilde's always got an intimidating look. The guy's a monster. And of course, the Prophet of Pain, really proud of what he did to William Wolf. We haven't seen or heard from him. We have no update on his medical condition, and uh, 
I really just want to send our uh, our best wishes out to him on uh, a speed recovery and hopefully we'll see him here back at the FGW arena in the future but right now Ryan Wild taking control of the Prophet of Pain, Amos, and tags in the FGW champion, the wrestling savant, Mitch Magnus. Mitch Magnus, the clubbing blow to the back of the head, not doing a whole lot of uh, scientific wrestling right now. Lots of stomps and strikes and clubs to the back. Nice suplex, and goes for the cover. Tag back to Wild, and these two in the early moments of this matchup working well together. Yeah, so far so good, but this match is far, far from over. And Ryan Wild now is lifting up uh, Mitch Magnus. Gonna hang him up, gonna hang uh, the Prophet of Pain Amos up in that tree of woe, and Wild. <laughs> Some wild chops. Let's see what I did there. He's Ryan Wild, wild chops. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> wild humiliating Amos in the corner and another tag. And here comes the champion. Out of the pen. Two count only. Amos slips out the back door. And Spectre reading the riot act to the champion. He's always got a lot to say. That's Spectre. Again, darkness worldwide. They've got their hands in everybody's cookie jar. Then they have branched out here at Future Great Wrestling. And tonight on Shockwave, what would a win do for darkness worldwide in this main event? A win would just bring their momentum further and further to that FGW championship. I mean, that's gotta be the ultimate goal. They want that ornament of power. They want the FGW title, and they want to strip it off of Mitch Magnus. So you believe their focus will be on trying to get a pinfall victory on the champion? I think that that would be smart. I think that David Barnum and Spectre are darkness worldwide. They're smart men. Uh, close call there. And Fallen yet to get into this matchup. But yeah, I think the FGW championship is what they want. And I think a pin on Mark Magnum, or excuse me, Mitch Magnus here tonight would do, it would get him there quicker than any other way that I could think of. Well, you know the golden rule, whoever has all the gold makes the rules and dark, dark, darkness uh, worldwide. That's the Cer one. Certainly wants that FGW championship. And now Eric Fallen is in against the champion. Oh, you can hear that thud as the champion's leg smashed against the canvas of the ring apron here in the main event of Shockwave. A rolling hip snap and the offense continues on the part of Darkness Worldwide. And the knee breaker. And they're trying to do the damage to the left leg of FGW champion Mitch Magnus. Tag and the Prophet of Pain Amos back in the ring. Still in control of that left leg. Trying to jerk the leg out of, out of its socket in the hip. And now Darkness Worldwide with the frequent tags. Good strategy, and it's working out for him. Oh. Only a one count there, Mooney. It'll take a lot more than that to keep the champion down. Got some gas in the tank still. The darkness, oh, it's a Gurry! And Magnus. Still has not gotten over to make the tag. He's more focused on that left knee. Fallen stunned, and this would be the time, and he makes the tag. Here comes Ryan Wild. 
And he takes out Amos as he goes flailing over the top rope. And both men looked like they were both attempting a choke slam. Wild with a forearm. Fallen backed into the corner. And now Fallen just bulls his way out. And there's the baseball bat. And we know the day. Oh! Joe Copez taken out in the corner. He certainly was, man. He was smashed into those turnbuckles. And where did Spectre go? Where is Spectre? Ryan Wild. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, there. That's there Stevel. is Stevel. It's Stevel. He's here. And that roach on the back of Ryan Wild has got to be like a target. Stevel staring a hole to the face of Ryan Wild. Now remember everybody, these are brothers going at it and oh, we are playing the feud. And the referee's down. Well, that's the only reason the bell's not ringing right now and the disqualification has not occurred. Steve on the other half of Roach taking it to Ryan Wild and meanwhile in the ring, here's Mitch Magnus taking it to Amos. Chop block to the leg of the champion. Joe Copez looks like he is still down. We know Logan Lynn has been taken out. Do we have any other referees here tonight? He's choking Mitch Magnus. Well, they have, Darkness Worldwide has a license to kill now. Referee down. Nobody to stop them. Oh, wow. I don't know if Joe Copez is going to get up. He was pressed into that corner hard. <laughs> Spe <laughs> Spectre <laughs> trying to uh, be a zebra there for a moment. I don't think that count counts. I know it doesn't. And Mitch Magnus back to his feet, doing everything he can. Ow! <laughs> right on the head. And the fans have counted to three. A moral victory at best for the FGW champion. And he is limping. He has turned his back on the Amos. See the way Fallen was folded up. That springboard fist right to the face. Oh, that was nasty. That's and the now, blackout. The black light blacked out Mitch Magnus. Joe Copez makes the three count. Another huge win for Darkness Worldwide. I have not forgotten. Streamers. A lot more. Drew's working twice as hard to rip them. Well, if you don't know, if you can't, can't figure out, the crowd is firmly behind Mitch. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see why. Uh, I mean, a guy like Drew comes in and complains about everything, walks right into a battle royal, wins the belt. Um, well, Mitch Magnus. It says this is his last chance. There's a sign out there telling him it says the third time's a charm. Oh, right, here we go. He threw streamers at me. You don't like him either? I don't like him now. 
Mitch Magnus, this is more than his third time though. He couldn't get the job done against Space Invader when he's the champ. He couldn't get the job done against Trice when Trice was the champ. And this is his third opportunity at Drew Skills. But Mitch Magnus had put himself in the position to get these matches every single time. I said it before, I'll say it again, nobody wants it more than Mitch. But I don't know if Mitch got what it takes to go all the way to bring it home. If everybody got what they wanted, everybody would be champion. I mean, look at it from this way. Mitch Magnus, a lot of, a lot of emotion in this. It's his third and last match. Of course, as we've all talked about all night, we lost a dear friend in Super Zeta. That's on his mind. And you're dealing with a guy like Drew Skills. Who just went and missed with the elbow drop. And yeah, Mitch, oh, they tried to oh. kick the rope. Mitch had it blocked with his foot. But yeah, Drew also was a friend of Zeta's. Drew tried to poke the eye, it was blocked. Mitch goes for a punch, and uh, can you believe it? Drew goes complaining about a close fist. Yeah, and I mean, he complains about it with senior official Joe Copez, who, let's be honest, has probably missed a few punches in his life. Well, Joe was the first ever professional wrestling referee, I was told. I've, I've, I've heard that story as well. He, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm pretty sure he ref the match between David and Goliath. Oh, he didn't even see The Rock. I know. He's the first guy to miss a 400. <laughs> Joe's telling him, don't listen to them. Shake my hand. Oh, he tries for a kick in the gut, and is caught. But that connected, that connected solid to the side. Did not stop that one. <laughs> Mitch's Magnus. eyes already looking a little glossy. Oh, he's got to be seeing stars. What a drop kick from the big man. Oh, a little Karate Kid action. Drew's starting to feel it, and that could be the worst thing possible for Mitch. Heavy chop across the chest, backs him in the corner. He's wrapped his arm around the rope. Ah! Trying to tune in Tokyo. Oh. He probably would have rather had his chest chopped in. I'd rather get hit in the face if someone twists my nipple. Yeah. Oh, he's returning a favor. Double purple nipple. But Joe's a Martian, but I don't think that's against the rules. I, I, I think Joe, Joe's more admonishing him for being in the ropes than the nip. I mean, a guy like Joe's not going to call somebody out on twisting somebody's nipples. Especially a guy like Joe. <laughs> Especially. Slick Rick knows what we're talking about. Absolutely. Now he's biting him. He's like... He's biting like the wild Samoans used to bite fish. You know, the, uh, he tastes like chicken, says Drew Skills. Just trying to rip his face off now, Mr. Ayers. Mitch hung up on the rope. Drew stalking him. Taking his shot. These guys... These guys are no stranger to each other, but you gotta remember, Drew has one thing in mind. Apparently he says he wants to destroy Cody, yet won't go for Cody. Goes after his students. He feels he can hurt Cody 
not only physically, but he wants to hurt him emotionally and mentally first. Mitch and he's done that. He's beaten up students. And then he has come here and he has taken the title. And he'll be gone for weeks at a time. You know, when you're the champ, you get to make rules like that. Magnus trying to come too. Slow getting up. Ah! Oh, um, have you ever been? I've been headbutted by Drew. It almost put me in a coma. I I have not, and I'm not lining up for it either. I definitely could taste metal for a week. Is that the sign of a stroke? Maybe. Maybe. As his shirt says, Mitchy boy, using this energy of the crowd. Flying burrito! Arriba! Mitch trying to make his way over. Mitch has got to get the cover. He's taking way too long. Nah, you got uh, not even a not even a two count. He kicked he out before it. Leg. Not to mention he gave Drew way too much time to recover. He's hooking it up. And there's a reason they call him the king of the forearm. Oh, get him out of the eyes, Joe. Get him out of the eyes. The eyes, the great equalizer. Yeah, I don't care how big and tough you are. You get a, a thumb in the eyeball, that takes the fight right out of you. Mitch fires right back with his own. Hey, when it's your third and last time, you got to pull out all the stops. And it is. If he does not win, oh, Joe, they made a Joe sandwich. Uh oh, there's falling. falling. As far as saying he thinks he could beat Drew? Is that, uh, that's what I'm thinking. A guy with the ego of Drew's skills is not going to take kindly to thinking he needs your help. There's Curry Hall. This is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> I'm sure this is less than ideal for Drew Skills. Cody Hawk out here. Total man, now they switch oh. arms. Falling to Cody over the top. Drew and Mitch stay in the ring. They're brawling to the back. Silas has come out. The match is still going on because Joe didn't see any of it. Uh-oh. Oh, washer machine. Is that it? No! Mitchie boy's got some more in the tank. He's got no look at the, his eyes. The lights are off. The lights are off. He kicked out on instinct alone. Slick Rick almost rang the bell. He did. Normally I'd say Mitch needs to stay on him, but now he needs to use this time. Hits him with the back elbow there. Forearm from Mitch, he's going to the second rope. Another fire burrito. Mitch, Mitch is feeling it. Get the cover. One, two. Ah, oh, the champ still got some left in him too. Drew calling over the ref. What's that all about? I mean, what's the ref doing? Oh, he just hit by him. But that. Is he going for a Samoan drop? Joe, Joe's throwing. He's Joe's throwing over to make the count.
third time was the charm, Mr. Ayers. I'm still in shock. Mitch is in shock. FGW will be returning very soon. Keep an eye out on the FGW page for future details. We miss you all. We've been working very hard. We're looking forward to get back to work. This is Robin Nelson. Future Great Wrestling will be coming back soon. And as well as my show, Beyond the Bell. And FGW superstars do really miss your fans and are ready to get back to work. See you soon. This only has a 33 and a third percent chance of walking away the champion. Did you learn that through Steiner math? There you see the FGW champion, Mitch Magnus, holding that gorgeous FGW championship. He's at a disadvantage tonight. He certainly is, Mooney. As he does not have to be involved in the, the fall in order to lose the championship. No count out, no disqualification. Pinfall or submission, the only way to win this match. And Rick Tom's ringing this bell with authority. It's underway. The main event, FGW Championship. Mitch Magnus the champion, undefeated Sean Casey, paranormal Eric Fallen. Everybody looking for an opening. Feeling each other out a little bit. <laughs> Your referee for this match is senior official Joe Copez, and there's lots of colors and elbows tied up in this three way. All men pushing off of one another, and now back to the quarters that were behind them. I'd have to give the strength advantage to Fallen, the, the biggest of the three men. I gotta give the experience advantage, hands down goes to Casey. But uh, Mitch Magnus has the biggest heart, I believe, of anybody in that ring. All three of these men have their strong points. And they, they've come to know each other pretty well. They've competed against one another in tag team singles matches. All kinds of different types of contests throughout FGW history. Not to mention that chaotic brawl after Shockwave just a couple weeks ago. And the brawl that you mentioned that got the paranormal Eric Fallen fined and suspended. Well, I know was, he wasn't really worried about the money as uh, Spectre you know, paid that tab for him, but it was more about the fact that he couldn't get to the FGW arena and, and do a little damage to either Casey or Magnus. Well, Moody, that might have been a blessing in disguise because the paranormal Eric Fallen, he had the night, he had the week off, give his body some time to heal. Not only is he a competitor. Nice, double hip toss. Here weekly in FGW, but throughout the independent scene, and especially after that violent brawl, you gotta believe he wasn't his best. Clothesline by Casey, taking the champion down. And Fallen trying to recover from, whoa, wait a minute, now Casey wants to partner up with Fallen to do some damage to Mitch Magnus. Oh. 
And an elbow. Two elbows. One from Fallen, one from Casey. Both to Mitch Magnus. Hard double vertical suplex to the champion, Mitch Magnus. Sean Casey, yeah, he's going for a high five. Sucker, D man. No one followed, followed, looked like Billy to him. Can't believe that worked. Had that big, uh, big grin on his face. Surprised Fallen fell for that. He's a veteran. You know, Moody, you ask me, I think Fallen was ready to strike Sean Casey right there, too. Casey just beat him with a punch. And Casey ran right into that boot. Exchange of forearms. I don't know if you want to do that with Mitch Magnus. Yeah, that's not a wise decision. Throw forearms with the champion. That's his specialty, those forearms. And now the ring goes fallen. He tried to catch himself, but he's, he hit that steel rail. And now Casey. Yeah, that's a dragon sleeper. Yeah, he was gone for that dragon sleeper, looking for a submission early while Fallen was out of the ring. Leaping flatliner from Casey. Lateral press here. Fallen breaks it up because this is not an elimination match, Mooney. The first person to pin anybody will be the champion and the cover here. This time Casey breaks it up. Fallen with that handstand into a twisting corkscrew leg drop of sorts. Innovative maneuver. And both men just taking turns teeing off on the champion. Yeah, having a fight over who gets to lay the fist down on the face of Mitch Magnus. Oh. Super kick. And look at this goal boy. Sean Casey saw that just in time to break it up. And fallen. Out to the floor, right hand by Casey, knife edge chop, and another shoots him off. Sleeper! Boy, Casey in there with a couple of Redwoods and not sure if he would have went, he should have went for that sleeper, but he's got it and Mag Magnus is down to a knee. Well, don't forget about Eric Fallen. The systematic paranormal one, oh. he's got the sleeper locked in to Casey. It's a slumber party here at Cold Blooded. Well, Mooney, if, if Magnus were to tap out or fade away, that would mean Sean Casey would be the champion. And Mitch Magnus has been the one, he's the one that's been in this move for the longest by a lot. If you ask me, I don't know if this is the best strategy from Eric Fallen. And Fallen must be confident in his ability to be able to choke out Sean Casey faster than Casey can choke out Magnus. And Magnus able to deliver that double jawbreaker. Jack and the jaws of both men. That's right. That's why they call him the wrestling Zavon. He found a way out of that. Ball and runs right into the clothesline. Casey into the back elbow. And Magnus. Nice control of the ring from, from uh, Mitch Magnus, the FGW champion. Knocking the noggins of the challengers. A little melon masher. Oh my God, hard down on the head goes Sean Casey. Somewhat of a corkscrew suplex and uh, Fallen. Oh, and one to Fallen. Rolls over. Both men able to kick out. Now is it Magnus going for that dragon sleeper? Strong snap there, bringing Yeah, Mitch good Magnus escape over. by Fallen. Trying for that corkscrew cork suplex again. He lifted them up and brought them down, but is it enough? 
Now, Fallen kicks out at two. Not enough weight over the shoulders of Fallen. No leg hooked. Uh, yeah, Fallen. Fallen's in trouble here. Fallen could submit, and that would give the victory to Mitch Magnus, the FGW champion. Casey stirring in the corner. I think Fallen has taken the most damage in this matchup. He's taking the super kick, and Casey went for another one. Huge choke slam. Big devil's hand choke slam by Eric Fallen. Scoop, he has Magnus up. Magnus out the back door and goes right back to that dragon sleeper. Fallen could be fading. This Magnus is again great behind the waist of Eric Fallen. This would be a reverse guillotine. He's got the, got the choke locked in tight. Fallen trying to hey, swivel the hips. Not a bad strategy. No, with his length, if he could get his foot on the ropes, that would save him. Oh, look at that, trap the arm. Magnus in full control of Eric Fallen, who's trying to bridge to alleviate the pain. Joe Copez needs to watch the shoulders of Mitch Magnus. Absolutely, good call, JC. And Casey trying to get back into the ring. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, and still the FGW champion, the wrestling savant, Mitch Magna. And that's how you take care of business, JC. You take out your two number one contenders in one night. Now, here's the thing, Fallen, he suffers the loss. Casey, he's still undefeated. Didn't win, didn't lose, but didn't factor into this into the decision. Well, Moody, you called it at the beginning of the match. Your prediction came to be Mitch Magnus, the FTW champion, still FTW champion at the conclusion of this triple threat main event. Here tonight at Cold Blooded. You see him hold the title high. streak here tonight, the FGW championship on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event. David J in the corner of the undefeated sexy Sean Casey, looking to add more hardware to his trophy case. Well, that's what it's all about, the FGW championship, the top prize Mitch Magnus company. won the championship on an episode of Shockwave back September 27th. That's right, Mooney defeated the Midwest Mastodon, Drew Skills. He has defended the championship in triple threats. He has defended the championship one-on-one. -on -one. And tonight, he takes on his toughest challenger to date. Defended the title against militant Mark Magnum. Defended the title against Eric Fallen. He's even defended the title against Sean Casey. However, that was a triple threat match. Sean Casey not pinned. It was Eric Fallen pinned in that match. Sean Casey arguing the point that he has never been beaten by Mitch Magnus. And that is a true statement, Mooney. Mitch Magnus has a point to prove here tonight, too. Glenn Young drawing the assignment for tonight's main event championship match. Did not see David J grab the foot of Mitch Magnus. Mitch Magnus at all times must be aware of David J on the outside. And these two have yet to lock up or even touch for that matter. Sean, 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 no hurry to get started here. Sean Casey has had an attitude change as of late. David J also 
They, they seem to have become obsessed with the FGW Championship and care for little else. Sean headed down to the low ground, getting away from Mitch Magnus, creating the space and separation. Fight continues on the outside of the ring. Oh no. And Casey has gone out into the crowd. We're gonna need security to get over here to keep anybody from getting hurt. Hard to see exactly what's going on from our vantage point. We hear that brawl taking place throughout the crowd. This match has turned into a fight. Hard impact there, Mooney. You could hear it echo throughout the FGW arena. Oh my God, into those chairs. broken loose. Sean Casey. Casey making his way back to the ringside area. Mitch Magnus in hot pursuit draped over the guardrail is Sean Casey. And now Magnus bringing Casey back into the ring. Stomp to the midsection, whipping Casey into the corner. The FGW champion looking pretty good right now, Mooney. And David J going over to check on his charge. Mooney, what a night we've had. We saw what could possibly be the last match in the career of Cody Hawk. What a big victory. Congratulations to Cody Hawk. We saw a new Super Zeta, the first ever inaugural champion being crowned, Shauna Reed. That big victory, a near fall there. See Billy transformed back to William Wolf. History has been made here at Origins 2, that is for sure. We have had so many spectacular moments throughout this evening. And Sean Casey just one second away from defeat right there. Kicked out, back to his feet, went for the close. No! Super kick! Bang biscuit! Casey got him! That's it, Moody! How many people is Sean Casey? Finished with that super kick! No! Foot on the rope! The champion foot draped over the rope, got the rope break. This the, match continues. The advantage of Magnus being so tall, he has those long legs. Casey should have shown a little more ring awareness, but now he is going to the top rope. Right into the boot of the champion goes Sean Casey. And the undefeated challenger now in trouble. Mitch Magnus charges into the, into the corner. And Magnus, known as the wrestling savant, looking for the answer to getting the win here tonight at Origins 2. And now, it looks as if he may be going up to the top rope. He is. Pulling out all the stops as the champion. 
Oh, referee Glenn Young taken out. Sean Casey, the intended target, Glenn Young caught the double axe handle, smash to the head. No referee. And Casey going over to check on the referee, excuse me, the champion going over to check on the referee. Magnus ducked the chain. Oh no. And now Magnum. Magnum's in trouble. That dragon sleeper, and he's got the arm. Mitch Both Magnus, arms. the champion. Wait a minute. Glenn Young is calling for the bell. Hold on a second. Did, did Mitch, did he tap out? I didn't see him tap out. Jackson Breeze went over and said something to Glenn Young, who was still a bit delirious from that ax handle. Give me a victory by submission? He may have disqualified Mitch Magnus for hitting, hitting him with that sledgehammer. Wait a minute! Sean Casey just clocked Mitch Magnus with the FGW Heavyweight Championship. Moody, if it's a disqualification, the title will not change hands. However, if it's a submission, is Sean Casey the champion? What the hell's going on here? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner. What? And the new FGW champion. I've seen this before. Casey. Sean. I've seen Casey. this before, and it happened in Montreal. Jackson Breeze has orchestrated a title change. You have orchestrated. He did tap out. He did tap out. Unbelievable. Origins 2 ends in controversy.